start. <laughs> Crash and burn, a road physics lesson by me, Autumn Smith, and me, Adam Davis. When driving on the roads, there are things to remember, such as following distance, reaction time, braking distance, and total stopping distance, and all other factors that are subcategories of those things. The following distance. The following distance is the distance that you follow a vehicle. It should be a buffer between you and the car ahead. An ideal following distance is three seconds. A way to track following distance is to pay attention to the car up ahead of you and use something on the side of the road such as a sign or a utility pole as a marker. When the car passes the marker, start counting and if you reach three seconds by the time you reach that marker, you are using the ideal following distance. Reaction time slash distance. Reaction time is the time it takes to react to emergencies on the road such as someone suddenly stopping or jumping out in front of your vehicle. And the reaction distance is how far the car will travel depending on your speed and reaction time. And the average reaction time is 0.26 seconds. Some distractions that can contribute to higher reaction times are texting and phone calls, other passengers, and a statistic we looked up showed that it was six times, people were six times, teens were six times more likely to perform an illegal maneuver or get into a crash with other passengers. The influence Teen of alcohol. Passengers. Mm -hmm. Teens are bad. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. The influence of alcohol or drugs also contributes to a higher reaction times and speeding. Calculating the reaction distance, reaction distance would be the rate you are traveling and the time you react. An example would be Diana is driving at a rate of 10 meters per second. Her reaction time at average is 0.26 seconds. How far will Diana travel before she can react? 2.6 meters. An example of distracted driving would be if she were to be texting, causing her reaction time to triple. How far Diana will travel will be much greater. The braking distance. The braking distance is the distance traveled between applying the brakes and when you can come to a complete stop. It is not the total stopping distance. The braking distance is your initial velocity squared divided by negative two times your acceleration. Diana's acceleration is negative two meters per second. Because it is a negative acceleration, she is slowing down. Her velocity is still 10 meters per second. And so with how far she'll travel will be 25 meters. Total stopping distance is reaction distance and braking distance combined. So if you combine the answer from the very first problem and the last one, it will be 27.6 meters. And that will be her total stopping distance. Applying to traffic. Oh boy. Turning. Oh, I'll just do this one. Okay, you want okay. to When turning, you need to take into consideration the laws of motion and inertia. And with friction, Usually around, I don't know about other places, but usually around here to avoid any veering off roads because of low friction or high speeds, there is an advisory speed limit posted and it's usually 15 miles per hour. And then when at a yellow light, do you slow down or speed up when the light turns yellow? Trick question, you shouldn't have to do so if it is a safe light. When I was in, 
driver's ed, my instructor called it the point of no return. And this is referring to the go zone and the stop zone. The go zone and the stop zone. The go zone is the your velocity <coughs> times the amount the light the amount of time it takes for the light to change minus the width of the intersection. The stop zone is velocity times your reaction time plus your velocity squared, which is divided by two times your acceleration. And when taking into account the go and stop zone, these factors affect it because you are needing to know how fast you're going to get through the intersection, how long you are able to pass through, and the width of the intersection section is the distance you can safely travel through it without a crash. As for the stop zone, velocity, self-explanatory, reaction time, how fast you can react to the light changing, and braking distance, how fast you can stop and you don't want to get into the intersection. Overlapping the limb zones. When at a yellow light, there will typically be an overlap zone, is the spot between where you should go and when you should stop. And this is where you can safely go or stop. In unsafe lights, there's the dilemma zone, which is basically the exact opposite, where you can't safely go or stop. And this is how we know how to drive.